Good morning all. Uh, looking again at my Muppet 2 breadboard uh, onto which I've built this boost converter. Inductor, MOSFET switch, well there's the inductor, there's the MOSFET switch, diode, there's the diode, and the load, and I've used a 5 watt light bulb. And we know from the last video that I made that it works because if I turn this pot you can see that the lamp gets brighter when I start pulse width modulating that switch. So yes, working as a boost converter, but uh, lots of you said, let's see the voltage. There's the voltage. I haven't turned on the backlight yet, but I will. Uh, let's see the voltage when that lamp gets brighter. Let's see if the voltage goes up. So, well, let's do it. Um, so on the meter at the moment, we've got 11.23 volts. Now that's quite a bit lower than the 12 volts we've got on the power supply end. Uh, that can be explained because we've got a volt drop in that shocky diode, but probably not that much. In fact, most of that volt drop seems to be in these polyfuses. They don't make a very good connection. If I short out that polyfuse, you can see that go up quite substantially. So yeah, we've got losses in these polyfuses as well. But 11.23 volts, when I turn up this pot, will that go up? Bulbs getting brighter? No, it's going down. It's going down. The bulb's getting brighter, but we've got less voltage, fewer volts. Oh, what's going on there? Well, maybe it's this Ryobi multimeter. Maybe it's just not looking at the voltage properly. Uh, I know what's going on, but um, okay, let's just swap out that multimeter, see if it makes any difference. And this is where I'm going to bring in this multimeter. It's a multimeter and oscilloscope, two in one. That could be handy. Um, this has literally dropped through the door this morning, uh, very kindly supplied by Banggood.com. So let's get this set up and see what this one says. So this is a Must Tool MT8206 graphical multimeter. Uh, let's put batteries in it. Oh, it takes three AAs. Now, interestingly here, it says uh, install A, then B, in other words, the two on the outer side, and then put in C, the middle one. Hmm, I wonder why that is. Okay, well, I'll do what it says. At least it's printed on this. Oh, I can't get that off. At least it's printed on this uh, cover so that you don't forget to do that. Okay. Okay, I think the only reason for this is that um, these outer two batteries sit under a lip under this edge um, so you wouldn't actually be able to get this middle one in unless you did it in this sequence. I don't think there's anything uh, electrical that's uh, they're asking to do that. Okay, let's switch on DC volts. Mmm, graphical multimeter. Let's connect it up with some uh, banana plugs. Right, there she is. Uh, that's saying 11.36 volts. Let's take the lamp brightness up. And that's also going down. Down to 10, 9.8, 9.6 volts. So what's actually going on here? Now you can see that I've got my oscilloscope here, but let's put this DVM into oscilloscope mode and see if we can see what's going on on this device. Right, so let's press and hold the uh, display button. That puts it into oscilloscope mode. Now you can see right at the top of the screen, we've got the voltage there again, 11.36 volts. It's saying zero kilohertz. And let's turn on a bit of pulse width modulation. We've got uh, the brightness of the lamp increasing. Now we can clearly see that there is some sort of waveform here. It doesn't seem to be triggering the uh, frequency measuring device. The voltage again shows that it's gone down. But unfortunately, because this is a relatively low sampling rate, it's only uh, 200 kilohertz A to D sampling. It's not fast enough to show us what's actually going on. So I'm now actually going to switch to my uh, Keysight oscilloscope. And uh, I will do a more thorough uh, first look at this uh, meter stroke oscilloscope, this graphical multimeter. Um, but I did want to get it into the video quickly because uh, Banggood, who were very kind enough to send it to me, and uh, I did want to mention that it's their 12th anniversary between the 5th and the 7th of September. So that's right now. But anyway, we need to switch over to uh, the oscilloscope, so let's do that now. Right, let's turn this potentiometer. We can see the uh, lamp reflected in the front of this multimeter. We've still got the voltage there, 11.35, uh, the DVM is reading. Let's see what happens when we start uh, pulse width modulating this MOSFET down here. And you can see that um, we take this, this is the uh, 12 volts essentially. I've got ground down on the baseline here. So 12 volts is 
uh, taken down to ground by this MOSFET briefly. And then the uh, back EMF on the inductor gives us this pulse, which flies up. Now that's, uh, this is 10 volts per division. So that's 20 volts at the top of the pulse, 30 volts at the top of the pulse, 40 volts, 50 volts, 60 volts at the top of that pulse. It's quite a tall and very narrow pulse. And I mean, to give this multimeter um, its due, that runs at, what was it, uh, 200 kilohertz um, sampling rate. This is running at 2 gigahertz sampling rate. We've got a 60 volt spike. And uh, interestingly, if I keep turning this, that's clipped off at the top. That's actually being crowbarred. And I think I know by what. I think it's the MOSFET because if I leave that on with this crowbarring effect, that gets hot. Let's turn that back down. Uh, one thing this meter does do rather well is it's got a frequency um, position on the switch here and it's saying 15.65 kilohertz. So I can see this frequency and on the scope it's saying 15.66 kilohertz. So it's pretty accurate. So if you want to measure frequency, you can certainly do that. It just doesn't show up very well on the oscilloscope display. So I think the reason that we're getting this um, crowbarring, this clamping at that voltage there, and the scope says it's uh, 62 or 63 volts, is because of the MOSFET. Let's take a look at the data sheet. I'm going to wind this down because I don't want the MOSFET to get too hot. That's uh, spiking up to 30 volts now. Um, so here's the data sheet for the MOSFET. And it's got this thing, the VDSS, which I read as the maximum uh, drain source voltage before something happens. Um, 55 volts. So it looks like what we're doing is we're hitting um, some sort of um, crowbarring because the MOSFET is starting to conduct at that 60 volts and uh, we simply can't have that sort of voltage across the terminals of this MOSFET. How can we solve this? Um, one thing's for certain and that is that the bulb, the bulb down here which is now reflecting off the uh, front of this meter, absolutely doesn't mind this spike. It doesn't mind having 60 volts going into it very briefly um, because it's just the power in the bulb is just the sort of area under the curve or something like that. Uh, so the bulb is act almost acting like its own thermal capacitor. It's storing energy in the filament and smoothing out these transitions. But the electronics doesn't like this because this spike, the flyback spike from the inductor is so high that it's hitting the... Um, the crowbarring effect of this uh, this MOSFET. So what's the solution? Well, it's something that you've been asking for for a long time in this project. It's a capacitor. Now this one is uh, 1000 microfarads, 100 volts. So it's a big beefy thing. I've put um, banana plugs on there. So I'm going to plug that in and see what happens. Right, let's plug it in here across there and Boom, we've got DC on the oscilloscope. Uh, the frequency meter has decided that there's no longer any frequency and there isn't. And now if I adjust this pot, you can just see that the oscilloscope voltage, there is a bit of um, a bit of noise on top of that. Uh, let's see if I can trigger on that actually. So now we've got a sensible voltage reading uh, on the scope that increases as I turn the pot, the brightness of the bulb increases, and perhaps more importantly, the DVM voltage increases. It's having no problems uh, telling us the increased voltage on this bulb. And if I take that all the way up, remember this thing constrains at 50%, it won't go higher than that. Uh, the wattage goes up to 12 watts. The voltage goes up to about 20 volts on that bulb. Amazing that it can take that. Um, and there we have a smoothed boost converter. Now I'm going to put this banana plug in there and I'm going to move the oscilloscope probe back before the shock key diode because that way we can see, uh, if I re-trigger the scope, we can see, and I've got the uh, time base wrong, we can see the uh, low going pulses of the MOSFET and now we've not got a problem. There is a little bit of a spike um, there, but certainly not that 60 volts that's going to affect the MOSFET and cause it to crowbar and uh, as a consequence get hot. Let's just take a look at that spike and it's just a little bit of overshoot. There's a tiny bit of ringing there actually, but it's very, very 
heavily damped. So uh, yes, it, it overshoots ever so slightly on the back end of this diode, but the capacitor just smooths out the DC. So we're getting a lovely DC voltage into the light bulb there. And uh, now even at maximum boost, 50% mark space on that MOSFET, everything's stable. Actually, it did just go off. And I think what's happening is the polyfuse, which I believe are 750 milliamps. That voltage is actually collapsing away there. I think, <laughs> yes, it's just, uh, it's just died there. I think it's this polyfuse, it's red hot. Um, it's not really up to providing the uh, slightly over an amp or so that that bulb is taking at that voltage. So um, you can put these polyfuses in parallel. So I could make up a little double polyfuse. Now, a word about this capacitor. Um, people were calling for me to put a capacitor on here when I was using this as a buck converter, but the bulb doesn't actually mind having masses of ripple. And on the buck converter, we were sat between zero volts and 12 volts. There was masses of ripple between those two voltages, but we didn't have the problem we've got here that the voltage spike in boost mode goes so high, it was actually causing problems with the other components. The uh, MOSFET there was crowbarring that very high voltage spike. So the boost converter needs this capacitor, otherwise it can't function properly. Really interesting, this polyfuse, you can see a little bit of a glow from the bulb. This polyfuse is red hot and it's staying in its open circuit or sort of marginally open circuit mode. And it isn't actually recovering. It's not putting that 12 volts that's coming from the power supply through to the output. If I blow on that, I can cool it down sufficiently that it turns back on. The lamp is now at uh, 11 volts and this will now stay conducting. Intriguing things, these polyfuses. Right, I'm going to short out this polyfuse because it's uh, giving me a bit of trouble. Um, I'm just going to try taking this um, capacitor out and seeing what happens to the brightness of the bulb. I think my exposure is locked. Yes, it is. So almost nothing with DC. You wouldn't expect that. Let's put a little bit of pulse chopping in. Remember, um, we're looking behind the diode here. So we've got the capacitor in. So we don't get the big high spike, but we do get the drop down to zero volts um, at this point in the circuit and there where my finger is. Okay, let's take that out. Do we get any? We get the big spike appear on the scope, of course. The DVM's reading goes completely haywire. Um, yes, it is actually slightly brighter when I put the capacitor in. It's not a huge amount of difference. Let's take this right up to top of the shop. So we've got 21 volts on the capacitor and it's a lot brighter when the capacitor's in. So the circuit at a fair amount of boost, 50% mark space, is much more efficient with that capacitor in circuit. So that's going to stay there in my boost circuits. And uh, I'd be very interested to hear what difference this capacitor makes to the 15 kilohertz um, audio signal that some of you can hear, you young people. I can't hear 15 kilohertz. Long time since I've been able to hear 15 kilohertz. But yeah, what's that doing to the uh, noise coming out of, well, presumably this inductor? Let's turn that down. Oh, I think this polyfuse might have cut out now. Yeah, that's red hot. Looks like my other polyfuse has cut out. Quite handy having these polyfuses. So there we are, the boost converter circuit. Oh, we can't really see it at the moment because it's too bright. But the boost converter circuit needs the capacitor. With the capacitor, we get proper uh, voltage readings. We can see that the booster circuit is boosting the voltage right up there to 21 volts. And uh, we can take that back down to 11. And uh, I'll also put a link to the must tool uh, multimeter stroke oscilloscope, um, this graphical multimeter, um, as a link in the description below the video. And uh, Banggood are having their 12th anniversary sale. It's now on, it's only for a couple of days. So if you're interested in lower prices, take a look at that link in the description below the video. The bulb doesn't really need the capacitor because it can kind of aggregate, it can work as a sort of thermal capacitor itself. But we need the capacitor because that high voltage spike without it, let's have another look at that, is actually causing problems with the circuit components themselves. It's causing this MOSFET to go into a sort of crowbar. So we need that capacitor in circuit. But yeah, the boost converter 
is boosting the voltage and that's what it's meant to do. Fantastic, I'm happy with that. Cheerio.